going on people and welcome back to another edition of Chad and Chill on Yours. <laughs> Hope you guys have been enjoying the new segment so far. Now let's get straight into it. Let's get into the juicy part because that's why you're here to talk to me all day. Well, I guess you're watching me, right? I don't mean you're talking to me. But anyway, let's get right into the new. Wine glasses have doubled in size since the 90s and are driving higher consumption rates. Now, of course, the bigger the glass, the more you buy. But let me tell you a little more about this right now. Now, Cambridge Junior have been studying the differences between the sizes, which is interesting. In the 1700s, um, the first wine glass were basically the size of a double vodka shot or a double shot of anything in the club. Imagine drinking that as a wine, just a double shot glass. Now it's six times more than today at 449 millimeters. Now the average coat bottle averages at about 500 millimeters. Do your math, 449 millimeters. Glasses are looking a lot more hefty. You feel me? People are now more likely to spend a lot more money on these glasses. Is it a false advertisement or are we actually consuming more? In my opinion, it kind of just looks like the glasses are looking very big, but what they pour in their cup is not a lot. I mean, uh, one of my friends was a bartender, shout out Jeffrey Mar from Chat and Show, yeah, that no. He was saying the people pour, the people have a limit that they pour to, which is about half of that glass. Yeah, I don't think you're drinking a large, man. I still think you're drinking a small, just a nice looking glass. Maybe you should think about what you're consuming. But it is great advertising because people are now spending more. Let's get into the next story. Actress Selma Haik. Don't know if I said it right. Selma Haik. Claims Harvey was a threat to kill her. Now she came with a lot of a lot of speculation that um you know he wanted her to do a lot of nude scenes, sex scenes, that scene, wanted to come into the bathroom with her, wanted to do this in the shower with her, she kept saying no, 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 and more no. Now he did threaten to shut down the movie that they were both working on unless she did the nude scene, which again I think she actually did end up doing a new scene. I'm not 100% sure, but I saw a picture on there and looked like she was doing a new scene. So maybe she done it for the movie, she did it for the money. But hey man, more of the story is, it doesn't sound like Harvey Weinstein, I guess. You don't know. Now, US documentary filmmaker Morgan Sparlow, great. I mean, he's a great director as well, but, like. but unfortunately, he has publicly come out and confessed to a history of sexual misconduct. Referring to himself as I'm part of the problem. God damn, bro, what are you doing, man? I mean, salute for coming out, but come on, man. People need to. He was accused of rape and then just paid him off to settlement. Like, he just settled him for quick payment. You stay quiet, please, me. You don't want to hear that, no. Yeah, me, no. And you know, if he was ever his wife or his girlfriend, he also said that he cheated on both of y'all and he's always cheated on his wife and his girlfriend. I'm a good guy. Come to me. I'm single, man. Damn. What does it take so much for a big guy to get a thing out here, huh? <laughs> anyway, let's get into the next story. Now, this is, this is actually one of my most interesting stories of today. The NHS in England did become the first healthcare system in the world to publish figures of avoidable patient death, which is very, very interesting. Now, you hear about a lot of deaths that happens in the NHS. So, basically, they're talking about the deaths that they could have possibly prevented, whether that's a doctor mistake or not enough workers or anything along those lines, I think that's a beautiful thing to come out and tell us about. Everybody wants to know what's going on in the death. It's also that 170 out of 223 trusts will publish data and deaths they believe could have been prevented, which is great news. It's estimated that 9,000 deaths in hospitals each year are caused by failings in NHS care. So, it would be great to find out what's going on with the NHS. Everybody wants to know, I know you do, I do too, but I really want to know what's up in my hospital. Would we find out if it's the hospitals? Would we find the name of these hospitals? I mean, that's something we have to wait and find out. But is this great news? I think yes. And if you do, comment that in the section below. I will see you back here right now in about 10 seconds to tell you sports. See you in a minute. What's up guys and welcome back to the sports. Now as you can tell, there's a lot of news today. Let's start with football and England, England and football. 
and Arsenal, Spurs, Liverpool, Burnley, are they fighting for full sport or are they fighting for European League? Can you just believe that we're actually having a conversation where Burnley is actually in the mix for European football? The team that has a budget of about 33 million versus teams that have budget of about 200, 300 million. It just makes no sense. But I wouldn't put Spurs in that mix anyway because they're, yeah, they're pretty cheap too. But it's very interesting to see Burnley doing pretty well. Arsenal, Liverpool keep continuing to drop points. Um, hopefully they'll pick up some points. Well, I don't really hope so, but if you're a fan, you're hoping so. They'll start picking up some points. Burnley looking really well. They're looking like a real unit as a team. They work for their manager. Sean Dyche is doing a great job at Burnley. Um, we're looking at Spurs. I mean, they won during the midweek games. They're looking all right. They'll probably cement a fourth spot, I think. I think it's going it's to be difficult for fourth spot. I mean, I look at Liverpool. <sighs> their attack is so good that you just assume they could scrape into four but then you look at their defence. Arsenal Arsenal are like a decent all rounded team but yeah this is it's, it's very difficult. Now let's go into the two Manchester clubs. I mean uh, after losing to I mean yeah it's a fairly difficult horse course race. Man City has won the league I mean eleven points clear I just don't really see the point of even talking about the Premier League anymore. So yeah, I mean, who do you think is going to get relegated? Palace are picking that point. Swansea picked up the point. I mean, they did not win in the midweek, but they picked that point. Bonnie made a goal to make it 1-0 in, in a couple of games ago. Um, West Ham are picking up points. You know, they picked up four, four points from Man City, Chelsea and Arsenal. That's great. They, lost, they literally just lost to Man City by a glass gaps winner. They beat Chelsea. They drew with Arsenal. It's great, 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 great. I feel so. Newcastle seems to be dropping all. I mean, I remember when Newcastle were like eighth, seventh, chilling. Now they're like fifteenth, dropping. Um, Huddersfield and Brighton as well. They better be careful. They're kind of slowly creeping into the relegation battle. There, we are only midway through the season to even be having this conversation. So early in the season is crazy. It's so close. I mean, from about eighth to the bottom half is it's, it's what six, seven points apart. So it's not even like it's that deep. Um, so yeah, we'll see how the Premier League goes, we'll see what's going on. Now for the next story, there's been no evidence of corruption in the first test after fixing claims. Now there's been a lot of claims that, um, you know, the third test between Austria and England was fixed. Was it fixed or was it not? I don't know. You tell me. From what I'm looking at, it probably was fixed. I mean, it just looks fixed. I mean, to be having a conversation about whether something was fixed means something went wrong. Something must have gone down. Somebody did suck and suck and did suck and suck and suck and suck. So we've got so much going on within cricket. Um, and then, yeah, comment in the section below what you think. Was the third test fixed or was it not? You let me know. You tell me, please. They better let me know. Well, that's the end of the sports news. I know it wasn't a lot, but hey, what can you do when you're making news up the time? But anyway, listen, if you want to write in all the sports news and all that stuff, let me know. I can do more American-based news as well as the UK-based news. Listen, now, we're just winging it at the moment. But hopefully, hope you've been enjoying this segment. Let me know in the comments section of what you do like, what you don't like at the same time. Let me know what you want me to check. No, I'm joking. That's how it's But anyways, man, thank you very much for watching. Chat and chill. We'll catch you again next time for the news. Hopefully, you're enjoying these. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. Don't forget to press the like button. Don't forget to share the button. You know, you hit the little notification bell as well if you want to get notified when we come out. And you know what? Have a nice day. You know, like we suck your mother. Man, come for the bread, no butter. Welcome to family, no other. Had hard times, man, come from the gutter. I lean back on the pre-team with my hat low.